Tonight's class is to go over the evening practice. There, I mean, basically, all of the steps are as we talked about yesterday for the morning practice, but there, you know, a few uh, nuances. The first thing is if you're coming to take over for evening practice, and there's no one, the, the Zen Center itself is closed up, then you have to get the key, and as you, as we went over last night, you have to prepare things in the shoji room. And so you may want to start some tea steeping. You're going to want to set out for the evening one long and one short stick of incense. And then you want to make sure that the bathrooms are open, the meeting room is open and available, lights if you need it, and then this room. And um, depending on the time of year, you may or may not want the doors open. And if you know, if, if you're the only person who's going to be here as an officer, what I recommend you do is, both, and I do this both in the morning, I always crack this door open and then, and then push it so that it, it catches against the door. Because if you happen to be the only officer, you're out leading Kenyan, and you get to this door, you know who is supposed to open it. <laughs> right? So, I mean, just setting yourself so that you can get through all this without trauma. And, and the worst case scenario, which has happened, you just come back in through this door. And people sort it out. <laughs> okay? So, no great crisis. But you got to get this all lit up in here. And usually when you come in the evenings, you have a little more time and you're a little more awake. So you might want to check the candles and everything else so that, you know, these candles are starting to get low. There's plenty there for, for one more period, either morning or evening. I mean, and I know that simply through experience. But the candle supplies are also in the shoji room to the right of the sink, up above. Usually there are some down below, and there's also medical supplies down below the sink in the shoji room. And there also is a first aid kit. The metal box, we, you know, it's got all the typical things you need in a quick first aid kit. So that's there, and that's good to know about. The things you'll probably need if you're like the shoji, you know, a cough drop, maybe an aspirin or an ibuprofen, something like that. Those things should be there in the shoji room. That's basically where all the medical supplies are kept. And, you know, if somebody needs a cough drop or a band-aid or something like that, the shoji is the appropriate officer to care for them. Last night we were talking about that the officers are kind of like the parents and the zendo itself is the family, you know, so that among those roles, the chikijitsu is more like the father, and the shogi is more like the mother, in that the chiki is to represent the clean example of commitment to practicing through the situation. So when you when you sign up to be chikijitsu, you want to you come in and you're good to go. You, I mean, you want, you know, because to be the jiu-jitsu, it's not just a question of the timing and all that, but you want, you want to be a physical example of practicing as best you can. You know, that's what it means. The shoji is also committed to practicing as best they can, but the shoji's concerns are a bit more nuanced in they're, they're responsible for the well-being and needs of the sangha, so like, you know, for the kind, of, which has a lot of ramifications in the more complex situation of a training setting. But here, which is an urban practice setting, this is commuter setting. So, you know, you're more likely to deal with something, somebody stubs a toe, they got a headache, or, or your a cough has come up. And those kind of modest things are rather easy. But that's the shoji's concern. You know, so that if you if you are the shoji and you notice, for instance, that 
somebody came in for the first sitting and they, they coughed quite a bit. They go off for kidney and you might see, you know, pull them out of line and say, would you like a cough drop to get rid of health or something? Or not. I mean, everything skillfully. Okay? Don't walk up and give them a cough drop if they use it. <laughs> you know? So, everything's all set up. For the opening of evening practice, unlike in the morning, in the morning the Jigijitsu goes in, but in the evening the Jigijitsu is outside the Zendo. And so the Shoji passes the incense to the Jigijitsu outside the Zendo. And the, I'm going to need, I'm going to need some examples. So if I'm the shoji, you're holding the incense for the jigijitsu, and it's lit, okay? And so the procedure is the jigijitsu and the shoji make eye contact, bow to each other, and then the shoji, with their right hand, reaches around and grabs the bottom end, not the fire, but the bottom end of the incense sticks, turns it around, and then passes it to the Jigijitsu. Jigijitsu wants to catch those sticks in their hand. It, but ideally, see, there's no physical contact that goes on between the Shoji's hand and the Jigijitsu's hand. The, the only thing that's being passed here is the incense. No other contact. And then once that pass is going to happen, then they bow again to each other. If necessary, the shoji opens the door for the jigijitsu. Jigijitsu comes in, bows at the door, and comes up here. The shoji follows the jiggy in, and that would be the time to turn off the light if it's on behind the han outside because you're opening the zendo. Opening the zendo and turn off that outer light. So the shoji goes to their seat over there and just stands in place with their hands in gasho. Because they're going to say they have something to do right away. The Jigijitsu comes up here, bows, slips off their shoes, puts the incense down, and strikes one bell. Okay, so, with the bell, I mentioned last night you want to air it out, okay? You got, it's got to be clean, distinct. If you're worrying about it too much, it's too much, okay? I mean, and if you're worrying about being artistic, clever, or anything like that, then you're just doing your subjective mind, all right? Take your best shot, bam, you know, that's it. Then, as last night, the chicken picks up the incense, comes to here, you don't have to, you, nothing really starts until the chicken gets here. The shoji, you know, in terms of turning your back to the Buddha or anything else. As soon as the chicky rings the bell, the shoji is released to take the Mukugyo, bow, go outside and start. The shoji does not have to wait for the chicky and they bow together. No. Bang. You hear the bell, you manifest. You're not waiting to see if the other person's got their act together. Not practice. So, you come up, bow, offer the incense as before, come back and bow. I'm not going to repeat that part of it because it's identical. But the shoji comes out, strikes the han, and then if the shoji finishes with the han before the jiu-jitsu is done, the shoji just waits out here. Don't open the door or anything else, just look through the, the window. If the, if the jiggy finishes first, the jiggy can sit down if they have enough time. But if, as often happens, the, the jiggy finishes, you get up and you get to here, and, and the shoji is, you can tell that you won't be settled by the time the jiggy finishes with the han. So, in a well-flowing system, 
You don't want a lot of delay between when the Han finishes and this clap. So what I tend to do is, if I notice I can't get settled first, I just stand here and wait with the, with the clappers. So that as soon as the Han finishes, then I can do the start the rest skin in. With those two claps, then the shoji can come in. And if anybody came late, they're waiting outside during the Han. Nobody enters the Zendo during the Han. Nobody moves during the Han. And but they can, the students can come in, bow the seat, take a seat. Shoji comes in, puts down the mallet, takes their seat, gets settled in. Jiggy ends the rest of him with a clap and a bell, just as usual. You always, you, you know, when, when something is happening, like in the morning when we're setting up for chanting, there's something happening, you need a rest in him for all that activity in the zendo. And here, after the jiggy opens the zendo in the evening, you need another rest in him for the activity of the jiki getting settled and the shoji coming back in and getting settled and maybe some late students getting settled. So the rest in creates that, I mean, otherwise, it's supposed to be still, it's supposed to be silent. So that's the way in the flow of the form and etiquette. It's a lot. You start the rest in, people can come in, take seats. Rest in hin ends, we're all settled. And then as last night, two claps of the bell and the rest in hand, allow at least a brief pause, <clears throat> and then three bells to actually start the sit. Okay, and, and during that then, in the layout, the, that first sit in the evening is potentially the longest sit in our regular daily schedule, because it can start at 5.30, and it's supposed to go until 6.05. All right. No, that was good. I mean, I actually, I appreciate it. I ended a little early last night, so we have time for this. But in the schedule itself, it goes till 6.05. And then, one bell, clap, start the kin in, people get up. Yes, but yesterday get up, put their shoes on, and, you know, the jiggy, you don't want to be running out unless somebody is just there. It's going to take him three or four additional minutes while everybody's ready. Then you can go out. But if it's just a moment or two, I tend to wait so you catch everybody. Then a clap, everybody bows, you go out. As before, form the line. But this time, because the first, that sit was a little bit longer, I usually allow at least one more lap around the zendo for kidding, so it's a little bit longer. And you can use your own judgment, you know, but it's just, because at first it was a little bit longer, maybe a little bit, you know, so it, it winds up, you come out for kidding around 6.05, and again, it's, it's still around five minutes, maybe towards six minutes, about 10 after six you get back in. People get settled, everything else. I tend to, I like to stick with incense usually before, if I'm going to burn a stick, before I do the three bells, but some people do the afterwards. You have your three bells, you have a sitting. Then, on the schedule, 6.45, one bell. And then two claps for a rest kit in. So, when the two claps happen for the rest getting in, the shoji bows and gets up, puts on their shoes, and the shoji goes out to prepare the tea. Now, when I tend to do it, I tend to, like I said, you know, in the morning I prep the tea, and, I, and, and in the evening it's always a non-caffeinated tea. No black tea, no green tea in the evening. You know, because people are very sensitive about those kinds of things. But, and because it's an herbal tea, unless it's something like chamomile, which tends to get a little funky if you let it steep for a long time, you know, if it's mint 
or one of those guys. You can just put it in there, put some hot water over it, let it steep, and then it'll build up. It's fine. But if you didn't start the tea beforehand, then during the Kenya is a typical time for the shoji to slip in and make tea. You know, so you can do that. The shoji has a lot of permission, even during formal sitting, to get up and leave as necessary to respond to things. For instance, it'd be very, it's not uncommon, it's happened a lot, where we'll be sitting in the evening and say like UPS shows up at the door and they'll often knock at the door or something. Or you might hear Hamus barking because he senses somebody out in the breezeway. You know, the appropriate response is for the shoji to get up and come out and see what's going on. If somebody needs information or something, the shoji takes care of it. And you have to be sensitive to how easily sound from the breezeway carries into this room, especially during the summer months. You know, so so if, if there's something that you, people want to ask the shoji about, get information or that, take them into the meeting room. So the sound, so this space is an undermine. Okay. But otherwise, you can deal with them. The shoji can come in in the middle of the sit, towards the end of the sit, whenever, as because the shoji has a lot of flex. They're still responsible to the rest of the schedule, but the shoji is kind of like the troubleshooter for anything that comes up. Okay, so the shoji goes out, gets the tea prepped, then again, get the tea bags out before you come back in, add hot water as necessary. Now, this time of year in particular, it's starting outside. So, what I recommend for all shojis to do, to make it easy on the jiki jitsu, is when you come back here and you've got the tea ready. See, the rest can in is to run as long as it takes the shoji to get the tea ready, which, if things are well coordinated, that's just a couple minutes. But sometimes it takes a little longer, whatever, but the, the jiki and the zendo are waiting. And especially if it's cold, you got the doors closed, it might be hard for the chicky to notice that the shoji's outside, ready with the teeth. So my suggestion is you turn on the light above the han again. When you turn that light on, then the light, you know, assuming that the chicky is still awake, <laughs> they'll notice, and then they'll do the clap and the bell and the rescue. The shoji waits outside until the rescue ends. Then when that happens, the shoji comes in, out at the door, and they're going to put down the teapot, no incense room, just the teapot, come down, slip off your shoes again, and you turn up the lights. And again, I tend to use number two here, which is the big lights, the ones that are on now, for, for chanting and for tea ceremony. You can turn on more if you want, but that's my recommendation. If you just use the sliders turned up high, it, I don't think it, it's not enough light for people. Not if they have to read the sutra book for the chant. So, and that's next thing you have to allow for the people who need to be able to do that. So then, when it turns up the light, the shoji just picks up the tea. Okay, and they're holding the tea like this. You just wait. It's the Jiki Jitsu's call when everything starts. And the Jiki will wait until everybody is settled. See, you know, the rest can hit ends. Maybe some people were standing in front of their seat, so they have to sit down. While that's happening, the Shoji's coming in, so, so there's movement going on. But then, before the tea actually happens, the Zendo has to come back to the so, Jiggy says, sorry. Shoji bows, goes up, bow, the first person in line before you serve them, after serving the last person in line other than them. Go over here, repeat the same thing. Bow the first person in line before you serve them, 
after serving the last person in line, da da da. Come over here, back over here and wait. The same signal as before. The signal to start the second serving is when the chippy drops the cup into the bowl. They do that, you bow, go up. Same thing, offering tea. After you finish the second serving of tea, you come over here, you can slip on your shoes and just stand here and wait. Your shoes ready to go, but wait here with the teapot until everybody has finished and put their teacups away. And as I mentioned last night, if somebody is a little bit too slow, something gentle and skillful can be said to nudge them along. Okay? Finish up quickly or something like that. No emotion. Not a. Put emotion in the room. You're querying the deal. Okay? To be one of the officers is to be so that you're not bringing your personal self and laying it on the end up. But after everybody's finished, put it away. The show you just bows. Exit, goes back to the show room and they can grab a quick cup of tea for themselves. While that's happening, the jiggy rings one bell and then takes a stick of incense and offers it. Oh wait, no, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me back up. <laughs> because I'm, I'm mentally walking through it. Show you about it, claps comes out. Jiu Jitsu runs three bells to start the city. Okay? The Shoji is outside and they're getting a, a cup of tea. They, and if they do, you know, front, the Shoji wants to be conscious that they've got the whole set of waiting on them. But, you know, there's plenty of time for the Shoji to have a cup of tea or even a second. Come back in. And as soon as, and the Shoji just doesn't have to wait for it because the sitting's already started. So the Shoji comes in, bows here, and just comes over to their seat, and like in the morning, the Shoji just stands in, in place. Because what, what we do here is that as soon as the Shoji gets here and in, in place, the Jiki Jitsu rings the bell to end the sit. Then the Shoji takes the Han, comes outside, and starts the Han for the closing. While at the same time, the Jiki Jitsu takes a stick of incense and again approaches the altar, circles around three great bows to start the closing of the Zen. And then after the Jiki finishes with their great bows, they sit down. Even if the Han still go they just sit down. Because the Shoji has to come in after they finish the Han. And they will, and the shoji doesn't enter until the jiki is finished, because nobody enters during the, the, that part of the ceremony. But then the shoji comes in. You want to put down the mallet, take your seat, and then the shoji for, turns up. The lights are already up, so you don't need to do that. But the shoji is going to use the small makugio here. To, for the closing chant. The closing chant is the final instructions of code and Meadow. And once the Jiggy has a sense that the Shoji is pretty close to being settled, the Jiggy goes does three bells and then introduces the chant. Kozen Daitoa Kokushimi Kai Chin. And then everything else is here. And this chant, as you remember, Recall from the morning. This chant has its own tempo. It's not as fast as the regular ones. It's not as slow as the four great vowels. You know, this is the one chant that was written. That was Japanese when it was created. The other chants, the transfer are alliterations from the Chinese to the Japanese. Blah blah blah. You know so. You know, can't close it out of you kai You know, it's, it's like that, it can be quicker. I mean, if you're in a training environment, at the end of 
this year, and you chant this at the end of every day, and I'm going to say, careful. This, I mean, there are many translations online, DT, Suzuki's manual, Zen Buddhism translates everything we chant. You can read this, this, this is basically, look, you got food, you got a place to sleep, get your act together. You know, the most important thing is to wake up. You know, Khan, she said, Yo, you've got to see this. And he repeats it. Khan, she said, Yo. All right? And it ends with Ben Sen, Ben Sen. Yes, exactly. And so then usually the chicken just walks out. And if you were in a monastic situation, they would expect everybody to sit at least another hour with the older students leaving first. And the younger students have to stay and sit until the older students have all gone to bed. So, there was it. So, the cousin Dido is not the lullaby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 dinner is hours away. <laughs> it's meant to work hard. Well, you, we, you have one life. And if you believe in reincarnation, this is the next life. So get up. All right? And so then after, Ben and Ben said, you know, and then as at the end of chanting in the morning, the Jiggy Jitsu has to do that little ding da ding. But the thing is, it's got that ding to ding. You know, it can't be. You know, it's just because if you're an experienced student, as soon as you hear ding, you're moving. You, you don't need the second bell to know you should have moved on the first. Okay, so I mean, it's a single move. So you get up. And, and they're getting, and as I mentioned yesterday, time it so that everybody has a chance to get up. Some people can't do the great vows, so, you know, they can just simply stand in front of their seat. Do like this. No trouble. Some people can't even get up because, you know, and so they just sit here and that's what happens. All right? But you wait for every, everybody whose legs are basically working to get up and get settled with their cushions down. Chin, let the sound run out. Give all the old timers a chance to get down, do the bow, and then cut the sound off so everybody has a chance to get up. And you know, you want everybody starting together at, at the beginning of each one of the bows. So that's why you want to give everybody a chance to get up, 